Good evening and welcome back. Coronavirus, Europe is experiencing pandemic fatigue. And the idea of this being a new normal, I, I think it's going to be blown out of the water with information as we're going to get onto here, as contradictory as it gets on the end, with thoughts of mm, these lockdown measures seemed worthwhile, but then how the government is handling it, uh, which seems a bit contradictory as well, but I think I know what's going on there. So, COVID is taking an emotional toll across Europe with rising levels of apathy among some populations, the World Health Organization is warning. Survey data reveals the scale of this pandemic fatigue estimated to have reached over 60% in some cases, and higher as well. The point of this is, of course, initially, when there was 20, uh, only 20% disapproval for the initial lockdown measures, thinking, well, Christ, this could be like the Spanish flu wiping off, in, in effect, dozens of millions of people. Uh, and therefore, hey, we, we better lock this down because we're all going to get it and we're all going to die from it. As it happens, now instead of measuring the fatality rate in percentage, but actually measuring it in amount per million, as in it's about one in a million chance of dying from it, or at worst, six in a million, as in the, the daily death rates, when they go from about 60 to 360 out of a population of 65 million, then it doesn't seem to be such a concern. Whereas... So there's a, a small concern that you're going to die from it, but there's a 100% certainty that you are going to suffer from the lockdown measures. And at that point, you've got that fatigue. Understanding that, hey, you can't meet up with friends like you used to. You're interrupting your daily routines. You've got to wear a bloody tea towel when you're going outside because otherwise you're going to get fined or people are going to reprimand you. Even though that is then, of course, inhaling the other bacteria maybe how I got sick in the first place and you're limiting your oxygen levels which is why you get too warm, um, clammy and lightheaded after wearing them for any extended periods of time like when I'm wearing them on the job I then have to pop out every 30 to 60 minutes at most in order to just get some fresh air again because otherwise it's, it's ruining me and of course the depleted oxygen levels then make you more likely to catch an illness and lower your immune system anyway. Oxygen's pretty important. That's why exercise is so good, because it increases the amount of oxygen that you're getting around your body and also to your brain. But seeing as we've got even more confirmed cases, well, yes, seeing as we started off from like 20,000 tests, 20,000 tests a day to 120,000 tests a day, of course, you're going to get more positive cases because you're just testing more people. It's not doing it as, oh, as a percentage of the amount of people who are tested this is how many have tested positive. It isn't that at all. And instead of it being just potluck, it's now people who have symptoms in the first place, in which case it's skewing the results even more. Then you've got asymptomatic people, so it doesn't really matter. Then you've got people who had it a while ago, but are now recovered, but they still test positive. So that doesn't matter either. And therefore, with all the positive cases, only a small amount of them are actually worth reporting on, there might be a concern, in which case we then get down to the deaths. And that really isn't that many for the majority of healthy people. However, we have had the highest hospital admissions since June. Um, recently, in a day, about 360 again, which is the, the worst thing, it's up by about a quarter. But again given how many other illnesses there have been, there have gone unchecked for so many months, of course this is going to happen. And the other main thing about this fatigue is that people are saying, well, if we have a lockdown and then lift, and then we need to have another lockdown and then lift, and lockdown like the circuit breaker idea, well then why don't we just let the more vulnerable people shelter, and the rest of us can just get on with our regular lives. But I'm going to wrap this up <coughs> as we get down to the statistics here based on surveys of more than 1,600 adults. Before my voice gives out, I'm sorry. <coughs> Strongest support for the measures. They're less restrictive on groups of people meeting, with 85% supporting toughened rules around wearing face masks. Work from home when possible, also 85%, and pubs operating with table service only, at 82%. And then, we've got uh, the support for other measures is slightly weaker, Closing pubs at 10, 69%. Nice. 
Reducing capacity at weddings, 62%, and limiting indoor sport to six people at 61%. And yes, that is where you can have the healthiest people. <laughs> the, the obviously, you want the vulnerable people to make sure that they don't get harmed. But if you're out and about playing sport, you're definitely not in a higher risk category, are you? <laughs> so that isn't going to be an issue. Unless they may be talking about darts or chess. However... Disapproval of government handling of COVID continues to rise. Around 65% now say the government is doing a bad job, compared with 20% in late March when the country went into lockdown. So, although people, um, when questioned on individual policies, are saying that, yeah, I, I support all these rules, when you bundle them all together, they're saying, oh no, we, we don't support the government. So, it's either that there's just visceral hatred for the government and it's misreporting of what's happening, which in this case doesn't seem to be the case, but as often the case with like what campus reform does and fire on American college campuses to say, oh, do you support this? Um, Biden quote, yeah, oh, well, it was actually Trump. What do you think of that? So it's either that, where he's got more disapproval, whereas his actual policies are more approval, or it's that people don't actually really support these policies. And so they're trying to say, these individual ones, yeah, I've, I've got to be seen to supporting it. Otherwise, I'm going to have the police on me because not going along with it is illegal and therefore they're basically asking me do I agree with breaking the law <laughs> whereas <laughs> when it's about how about if we change the law back to normal or do you disapprove of the law then you've got people disapproving of the law so that is uh, basically my wrapping up of that my conclusion of how it is but as always let me know down below what you guys think always intrigued you always have to say and as always until next time <laughs> Stay strong, keep your voice, and have a good one.